Hi. Hi there. Wednesday, as promised. Um, hope you're having a great day. It is actually sunny and not freezing here in New York. And I just had a couple of thoughts. I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday and um, she's like, you know this stuff, you have to share it. So a little bit about me. I have been working on my health, my health, not just my physical health, but my mental health since 2011, which is a really long time. And it started innocently. It started just from my daughter's wedding, just to lose a little weight, which was the least of what happened. It was the beginning of a domino effect, but it is the least of what happened. One of my key um, situations at that time was extreme overwhelm all the time. I was newly single. I was working a, a job that I loved that was intense and stressful. I was an RN uh, manager in a nursing home, and I did love it, but it was intensely stressful. And the situation at home was complicated. So I started to take care of what I, started taking care of myself with eating properly, drinking water. I may or may not have been using various um, coping mechanisms that may or may not have been healthy, such as tons and tons of caffeine and coffee. Um, very limited sleep, obviously, hence the, from the caffeine and coffee. But one of the things that was one of the key factors to my becoming unhealthy and stressed and overweight and uncomfortable in myself, with myself, was overwhelm. And I really struggled with everything overwhelmed me. Everything overwhelmed me from what I had to do at home, what I had to do at work, what I had to do for my son who's got a bunch of special needs. He's awesome, but he does require some special attention. Um, and having college girls in the house. One was getting married. It was really a tough time. So one of the things that I've learned early on was what can I do, ninja skill coming up, what can I do to reduce my overwhelm and help me calmly get things done instead of getting things done in a stressful way. So I learned early on, I had to write it down, it had to be written down. It had to be in my calendar, which in my case always had to be electronic because I was all over the place. I was at work most of the day. I was at home. I was running errands like everybody. No busier really than anybody else, just internalizing a lot of the stress. And one of the things that I know is if it's written down, it's not up here and it's not causing me stress and I get a vision of what has to be done. So that's, that's a big thing. Um, big, huge thing. I mean, I use my calendar. I now use a journal. It's right here. It's always with me. Uh, you know, it's part of my morning and it really rocks my day. But something else that I've had to kind of learn and grow through over time was um, the need to accept help not my ninja skill. I'm a do it all, do it myself, get it done. And one of the um, interesting things about learning to accept help for somebody whose nature is not to, is that sometimes you don't have a choice. So my son, um, while thank God healthy and doing amazing right now, did spend many years being medically fragile with many, 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 many hospitalizations with his sister's um, although older than him, were still quite young. And I actually had an illness back in 2004, which required major surgery and four months of treatment. So I couldn't do anything for, for two of those months, like nothing. So we had to learn to accept help. And right now, in this climate, with everything going on in the world, I just heard of another family, whole family locked up in quarantine because somebody is sick. Thank God they're not that sick, but the whole family is in quarantine right now to protect others. So one of the things that I learned um, early on when uh, I had to accept help and what works, and this is where you might want to get a pen, you might want to share some of this, but you definitely want to listen carefully because I learned a lot. And I learned what works when people want to offer help, and I learned what can cause more overwhelm. And that's the key word to reduce overwhelm in all situations, whether it's day-to-day -day life or when you're going through stuff. So one of the keys to reducing overwhelm for me was to keep things manageable. So when we were accepting help and people were, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? Folks, don't say that. It 
it's not what can I do for you. It's I'm driving by Starbucks. Remind me how you take your coffee. It's not an option. Just tell me how you want it. I'm heading to the grocery store between three and five today. What's your list? Now understand when I was sick and all this was happening, we didn't have good cell phones. We, forgive me for reminding you this, paid for our minutes, if you remember that, and we had to do weird texting. I forgot what it's called, but we had to do that. So everything was different then. Now it's so easy. When you have, you're going someplace, I'm taking my kids to the park. I would love to take yours. Can I pick them up? Does four o'clock work? Be specific, be intentional with what you offer. And it's those things. I'm making dinner for you tomorrow night or Wednesday. Which works better? Do you prefer chicken or fish? It's not what can I make you for dinner because I wouldn't have told you. I would have said, no, we're fine, even though I couldn't do anything. So I want you to kind of think about the best way to help people when they are struggling with illness or a caregiver for somebody who's homebound or ill or going through various stuff. So it's kind of like, be very specific. I'm doing this, I'd like to include you and your family. That's a big thing. And then something that's a little unexpected, um, I did have major surgery back in 2004. I'm fine, thank God, every day, blessed. Um, and we were, you know, we're kind of well-known in our community and business and various things. And I came home from major, major surgery to a dining room table filled with vases and vases and arrangements bigger than, way bigger than my body of fresh flowers. I'm not gonna go into the ickies of cleaning up fresh flowers a week, 10 days, two weeks, three weeks later, but I'm gonna tell you that the best gifts that I got were not fresh flowers, they were flowering plants. So that's when the beginning of my love for orchids came, number one, and a friend had given me a beautiful dish garden and the flowers were very overwhelming. They were beautiful, but there were so many and the vases and the water and the, you know, the things. Um, and a friend had given me, she's a neighbor and a dear, dear friend, had given me a, um, an arrangement of plants and in there were a couple of flowering plants. I took that, it was in a white wicker basket, and brought it right up to the room where I was really spending most of my recovery. Couldn't do that with a fresh vase of flowers and who would have wanted to look at that? Anyway, and then the other thing, and this is like just another tidbit, which can make such a difference when somebody is struggling. People dropped off cakes and baskets of food and meals. Some meals were then, we, did, we had the old fashioned kind of meal train, which in those days was a friend calling and you know, accepting phone calls. So we had a meal train going on where preferences were specific. That was amazing. But somebody dropped off a cake which was lovely in it. And to this day, it may have been one of the best cakes that I ever ate. She's no longer alive. She was elderly, may she rest in peace. Um, but another friend dropped off a beautiful basket with just a few chocolate chip cookies. And another friend had dropped off um, these individually wrapped chocolates, which was like big. So my message is, Think on what is going to not cause overwhelm when you want to give a gift. And by the way, cards, written cards in the mail, always appreciated. I think in this day and age, texts tend to get lost. Um, kind texts tend to get lost amongst the urgent. And a card was, I still have the box of cards from back then. But it's about being specific. It's about offering genuine, intentional help not the blanket, how can I help, what can I do? Because most of us, especially us overachievers, will not answer. So I hope you found this helpful. Little tidbits on things that I've done to navigate life, but we all know people right now that are struggling with being home, that have had enough being home, or people that are actually ill. Um, another child in the special needs community was just diagnosed with COVID, which is scary to all of us, especially those of us who handle special needs. But just think about it and reach out because these are, I'm sure I'm, there are more things that I haven't thought of, but reach out, be careful of what you say to people. Hearts and hugs are perfect. Cards and individually wrapped things are amazing. And just show that you care and show that you can help in very specific ways. I wish you a great day. Happy Wednesday. If you have goals to reach in February, you still have plenty of time to do it. 
and um, we are, God willing, getting ready in this house for some visitors that we haven't seen in a very long time and praying that they get here soon. Have a great day. Have a great end of the month and share this if you found it meaningful.